Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Martial Arts Theater 3000. Today we have the daunting task of ranking Bruce Lee's movies. I'm going to list them in my personal opinion from worst to best. Stay tuned till the end because I have a bit of a controversial lineup as we get to the top here. I don't think most people would agree with this. Please note this is my subjective opinion. I know everyone's going to have different rankings and different opinions on this. Let me know down below your personal rankings of Bruce's five movies. Yeah, if you love Kung Fu cinema and martial arts movies like myself and want to shoot me a subscribe, that'd be a great help. I'm still growing the channel here, and thanks everyone for your support. So jumping right into it, the obvious bottom of the list is Game of Death, 1978. It came out. Now, this is considered the most expensive and most well-known Bruce Ploitation movie. They had the footage that Bruce Lee filmed in 1972, or it might have been early 73, when he filmed the Pagoda footage. Now, originally, the story was based on a movie workup Bruce did called The Silent Flute. So he shot the Pagoda scenes. He had multiple levels. His student, Dan Inasano, as the first fighter going up multiple fighters of different styles. At the top was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which was uh, Bruce's student from 1964 in UCLA. I believe that's when they first met. And he always wanted to get him into the movies. So he had all the footage for the fights of the finale of the movie. But he was racking his brain. He couldn't think of how to get his character to the pagoda. So while he was, you know, working on structuring this movie, building the story, that's when he was contacted by Warner Brothers to do the first co-production of a Hong Kong studio and an American studio, and which became Enter the Dragon. Now he got that offer, and as they say, it was an offer he couldn't refuse, so he stopped filming Game of Death and went off to do Enter the Dragon. Now, sadly, as everyone knows, Bruce filmed Enter the Dragon, but before it was released, he sadly passed away. And he never saw his international stardom and everything it all became, and that's a big part of the tragedy of Bruce Lee. But after his death, you know, there were so many Bruce Lee clones. They did years of movies of people you know, imitating Bruce Lee, some good, some bad, <laughs> often entertaining, in my opinion. But in 1978, Five years after Bruce Lee passed, they released Game of Death. And what Robert Klaus, the director of Enter the Dragon, did is he took all the footage of the Pagoda footage. Now, this is a little weird to me, but he edited it down to like uh, seven to ten minutes. I can't remember the exact. Out of about 30 minutes of classic Bruce Lee fight footage. He had that at the finale and the rest of the movie he filled in with little snippets of Bruce Lee footage but the majority is a Bruce Lee clone and it just it's very high production for the time but it's just odd the, the classic hysterical scene is at one point Bruce Lee's backstage and they use a cutout of Bruce Lee's face they paste it onto a mirror over the Bruce Lee clones <laughs> body and it is like i mean it's it reminds me of like an eighth grade student film level quality i don't know how they could have pushed that through i mean it's hysterical to be honest the other parts of the movie are a little less like obvious they try to obscure his face you can always tell when it's not bruce lee i mean when i was a young kid and seeing it i knew something was up you know i had read about it but I think a lot of people might be confused um, if you didn't know better what was going on. It's billed as Bruce Lee and everything like that. There's a, a significant jump from the majority of the movie, which is okay, it's it's decent, it's good production, but when it gets to the finale where they set it up and it goes to the pagoda and then it switches to the actual Bruce Lee, the remaining footage they used, that's where his magic comes on screen. It's worth the price of admission, I'd say, for that finale, but it puts it at number five on my list. It's worth a watch. Usually, I just watch the end of it. <laughs> and, oh, and another point. Warrior's Journey is a documentary that shows what Bruce intended this movie to be, and the footage that was found by Bay Logan 
is shown in full at the end of this documentary. And the buildup shows Bruce's philosophy, talks about the silent flute. So look for The Warrior's Journey. It was on Amazon Prime for a while. The best way to find it is to look for the Blu-ray of Enter the Dragon. I think it's the first release. The second one didn't have it, and the new Bruce Lee box set does not have it. But look for the Blu-ray of Enter the Dragon, and The Warrior's Journey is on there as an extra. And it's, it's my favorite Bruce Lee documentary, and you get to see the uncut found footage of the entire pagoda sequence with all the stuff that was left out of game of death next up at number four we have way of the dragon this is bruce lee's first movie he wrote directed all himself and known in the u.s is return of the dragon now this is a great movie it is different than the other ones has a different feel bruce's widow linda lee cadwell she said this is her favorite movie of his that shows his personality the best what it was like to know bruce lee and that does shine through when i was younger i thought it was amazing you know so great when i watched it when i was older it kind of just showed its flaws a bit it's one of those ones where the fight scenes are it's epic it's bruce in his prime he really honed in his craft on the fights and he had com complete control over it the setups to the fights and the plot you know it's thin it's plotting a bit it's you know he's working at a restaurant there's gangsters that are trying to take it over and threaten him <laughs> you know a very thin plot it lacks a bit of my favorite aspect of bruce's movies the vengeance plot or the revenge theme that you find in other films of his and when he's in that mode that's his best now this has that to a degree but it's just a bit of a more lighthearted film, bits of comedy. It's a little uneven. This is why I place it at number four. And of his completed films, it's the one I'd recommend least outside of Game of Death, which is like one fourth uh, Bruce Lee actual footage in it. I will say of this movie, the finale, Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris in the Coliseum in Rome, they have some footage of the Coliseum, but the fight is, you know, on a soundstage. This finale with Chuck Norris and Bruce, I put it in top three fight scenes ever. Definitely one of the most influential, most well-known. It's really realistic, and it showcases Bruce, his Jeet Kune Do, and his adaptation to what was in front of him. I mean, he's getting his ass whooped by Chuck a lot of the fight, and he changes his style he goes into a muhammad ali boxer stance more he learns what chuck's movements are it's something to see now this is what the movie's most well known for it holds up it's in the movie's worth watching the entire thing it's a great bruce lee great kung fu movie but the ending is just so stellar and so great it almost feels like a standalone piece next to the movie itself the movie has great fights along the way. Bruce versus Bob Wall, the classic back alley fight <laughs> with him versus the Italian guy and all these uh, different gangsters that are trying to take over this restaurant. This movie's finale, it puts it up in the top kung fu movies of all time for sure. So at number four, we have Return of the Dragon. All right, at number three, I'm going to get some shit for this, but... I have Enter the Dragon, 1973. Now, I just want to get this out of the way. Of Bruce's movies, if you were going to show someone a kung fu movie in general or one of Bruce's, I probably would show him Enter the Dragon first. It's the most accessible. It has the best production value. It's super entertaining, of course. And not to mention, it's the most successful martial arts movie of all time by far. And also one of the most profitable movies for the budget. But I'll dive into why I put this at number three. End of the Dragon is a 1973 Robert Klaus directed Hong Kong and American co-production. It was the first of its kind. It's excellent. It is. It's a classic. It is so well produced. The thing about this movie that drops it down a notch is instead of it being a Bruce Lee showcase i'd say of him being the main star they brought in jim kelly and john saxon to appeal to a wider audience base and warner brothers didn't feel an asian actor could carry the film in the box office which is sad because i don't believe at that time even that that was true i think bruce would have knocked it out of the park and it would have done as well as it did and because of that it feels a little more spread out the scenes it's not as like 
solely focused on Bruce in the entire movie or anything like that. I mean, it's a classic. Uh, one thing I will say is I f that dropped it down a bit for me in the rankings is I feel there's just, I wish I had more fight scenes. The fight scenes are awesome. They're, they feel a bit short and spread out. And something that I always felt is I felt the finale of Bruce versus Mr. Han in the in the mirrors. It's classic. It's like, you know, iconic Bruce with the three scrapes or cuts on his cheek. But the fight scene itself, it just, I don't know. It, I feel it's a bit anticlimactic. It could have been better, especially compared to other Bruce Lee finales in his movies. So that coupled with the fact that Bruce has a little bit less screen time and the plot, again, it has a bit of the revenge motive and Bruce is trying to take down Mr. Han. He's doing all these evil things. And there are awesome fight scenes in this. Him and Bob Wall, again, that is killer. It opens up with him versus Sammo Hung. The fight scenes are really great. It's just they feel a bit short. The best fight scene, hands down, is where he sneaks into the lair. One of the stunt doubles is Jackie Chan. It's well known now, but for a long time people didn't know that till it came out in Jackie's book and along the way. That whole fight scene, that is classic Bruce Lee. He's on fire and it. it is it's killer choreography and it's amongst the best of all time. But what puts it at number three for me is that it, I wish it had longer fight scenes. I wish it had a better finale and a bit of a better story. But don't get me wrong, this is one of the best Kung Fu movies ever. And trying to rank Bruce Lee movies... It's like picking your favorite child, as they say. It's very hard to do, but if I'm forced to pick a ranking, I place Enter the Dragon at number three. Coming in at number two on my list, we have The Big Boss, known in the U.S. as Fists of Fury. It's confusing what happened with the titles. Basically, The Big Boss was going to be called Chinese Connection, an ode to French Connection. But what happened is it, not, it wasn't called Fist of Fury, it was called Fists of Fury, plural, it got swapped, and then Fist of Fury <laughs> got called uh, The Chinese Connection. So that's how we knew it in the U.S. It's pretty confusing, but I usually just call it The Big Boss now. I put this at number two because there's so many things going for this. Um, a lot of days it's my favorite Bruce Lee movie, even if I don't acknowledge it as his best, quote-unquote. It's interesting. It was filmed in Thailand. It is a bit slower at the beginning, and... It's a build-up. Bruce made a promise that he to his mother he wouldn't fight, so he's wearing this necklace, this medallion, to remember that because there's so many scenes in which he wants to fight, but he's holding back. They call him a country bumpkin in the descriptions of this movie, and he's kind of like a fish out of water. He's uh, visiting family, working in this ice factory, and it's, you know, just like a standard plot for the time, the beginning. But when it gets to where the, his family is getting so abused and beat up by these tyrants that run this ice factory. It comes out that they're smuggling drugs in the ice, hence why they were going to call it the Chinese Connection. And during a scramble, when they're all getting beat up in the ice factory, Bruce's necklace, which was he was wearing as the promise to his mother not to fight, gets ripped off. And then I guess the promise is broken. And this is the first time in a... Bruce Lee movie you see Bruce Lee fight it's amazing it's one of the best moments ever caught on film in my opinion and this was ranks it so high for me it's kind of like a band with their debut album you know it's hard to can't capture that initial magic this movie has that in spades when Bruce fights on scene and it's the first time everyone saw him and wow he's just on fire in this whole movie and it has that vengeance theme that I love so much in, in Bruce's movies. So along the way, it's just him and his family are getting abused by these bosses. And eventually, as they uncover the drug smuggling plot, anyone who becomes aware of this, they kill and take out. And Bruce, is, they're trying to figure it out, and they decide to kill them all off. Bruce's entire family here, his cousins and all of them get killed and all his friends. And that's what just sets up 
this lengthened finale, a fight inside of the factory. It's great choreography, and it has this punch that Bruce lands, and it's such an iconic moment and great moment in Kung Fu cinema, and it just put Bruce on the map. The world was never the same after that moment, in my opinion, especially the trajectory of martial arts movies. And then at the end, we have a killer finale, Bruce versus the big boss himself. It's just a great fight scene. Like some of his other movies, it ends. The police arrive and take him away, and he's in this rage. And it broke all box office records at the time in Hong Kong. And I will say, I, this wouldn't be the first one I would show somebody, you know, if you're going to show them a Bruce Lee movie. But it's been a favorite of mine since I'm young. And Enter the Dragon, of course, has higher production value. I just feel these fight scenes have more weight to them because of the emotional investment you have in the character with this revenge motive which suits Bruce best in my opinion. That's why I put the big boss at number two. I know most wouldn't agree with that but that's where we got it. And coming in at number one we have Fist of Fury. What can you say about this one? In my opinion not only Bruce's best but it's up there alongside Enter the Dragon with one I would show somebody as a newcomer to uh, kung fu movies it has great production values um low way who also directed the big boss he can be hit or miss i mean he worked with jackie chan a lot in the early of his career and sometimes it's odd his productions can be they can kind of have that uh chop socky vibe to it like the image will be a little bit dark but on fist of fury it is colorful beautiful cinematography he just low way was he had a magical moment, probably because Bruce Lee was there and it was just, they had already seen the success of The Big Boss as Bruce's debut and now this is the follow-up movie and there was no uh, sophomoric slump at all. They took it up to the next level. I know I've said this a few times, but when it comes to that vengeance theme and Bruce seeking revenge, this starts out, out the gates with that. Bruce's teacher is killed. Um, if you know... Uh, from all these movies, the connection between the Sifu and the student. It's its more than just, you know, going to a martial arts class. It's such a connection. It's like um, his father dying. In this movie, Bruce is off the rails, going crazy. They can't calm him down. He's so upset. So he's seeking revenge the entire movie. The Japanese are taking over all the the Chinese Kung Fu schools and he finds out i mean spoiler alert the movie's what 50 years old now but uh, he finds out that people in his school these traitors killed his teacher poisoned him by way of uh, the japanese you know infiltrating his school when it gets to the scene where bruce goes to the japanese school by himself and enters the dojo i'd say it's the most classic moment and most iconic moment in all of martial arts cinema. And the whole movie just builds off this fight scene after fight scene, awesome choreography, and Bruce shows his best acting skills. I mean, there's, he is in kind of one mode, I'd say, in it, but there's a romance. There's different elements you don't see in his other movies. And the ending, it's just this long straightaway of just killer fight scenes, and Bruce versus Bob Baker at the end, the Russian they bring in to fight him. Another amazing Bruce moment. And then it gets to the finale, which is killer Bruce versus the Japanese leader with the katana sword. And uh, another fun fact is whenever Bruce kicks him and he flies through the air, that's Jackie Chan again as the stunt double. And uh, wow. That's a it's amazing, Jackie Chan. I mean, he he takes uh, a lot of knocks in these movies, and this is what where he started um, as a stunt double for Bruce. So, what else can you say about Fist of Fury? It is uh, Bruce's best movie. It's definitely in the top five kung fu movies of all time. Uh, you gotta watch it. Tell your friends to watch it, <laughs> and uh, it's great for like I said, showing someone who's never seen any Kung Fu movies, this is a great one to have them watch. Definitely a bona fide classic. And that's, a, that's my number one there, Fists of Fury, 1972. Thanks, guys. I know my list uh, is going to be different than the majorities, I'd say. Uh, let me know down below how you rank Bruce Lee's movies, one being the best, five being his worst.
Thanks again, guys, for all the support. Find me on Instagram at Martial Arts Theater 3000. Uh, if you like my content, uh, definitely subscribe down below. I have a lot more on the way. Talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.